Hi, I'm Peter and welcome back to the History and Saber Suites, the channel where I talk about HEMA, history and swords. Now, I do hope you liked that little intro there, but I really do feel that a nice saber like this deserves some cinematic embellishment for sure. Now, this is my first look, initial review of the Shabla Polska Shabla Husarska Tube 5. Now, I hope I somehow didn't butcher that too much, but I think it was about right. And it's my new sharp Hazar Saber by the company called Shabla Polska. And yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so background and expectations. I'm a HEMA practitioner of over four years now. And for most of that time, I've been training and teaching military Saber. And in my four years of doing HEMA, I've never owned a sharp sword. I have test cuts before, several times, uh, here in Graz at my club and also uh, at an event in Prague in the Czech Republic, but I've never personally owned a sharp sword. And given that we are in lockdown again, and we were in lockdown initially in the first lockdown of 2020 corona pandemic, when I ordered this, and I thought it was the right time and I might as well spend the time cutting. Now, I ordered this because I wanted a saber for my first sharp sword, because that's what I do. And at some point in the past, I almost ordered the Cold Steel 1796 replica, but I, in the end, I decided against that. And I really wanted something that's more to infantry specifications, even though this is a Hazar Saber, but I wanted something that's not too heavy, not too long, and could be used as a sort of generic Saber, infantry, cavalry, and that's exactly what I got. Now, I went online, they are a custom shop, and I looked through their standard models, which they also have online, and this is their Type 5 Hazar Saber, Polish Hazar Saber, which is a representation of a 17th century Polish Hazar Saber, but it's also representative of a lot of 18th century up until Napoleonic uh, period Hazar Sabers, I'd say, in terms of the stats and the blade. The looks are very distinctively 17th and maybe early 18th century, but it does represent quite a lot of different sabers that I'm interested in. Now, the blade was the deciding factor. They make a lot of different blades or a few different standard models at least. And this very sleek looking, very evenly profiled uh, cutting blade caught my eye and I thought that's the one I want. That's the one I want. As for the hilt, I'm usually a fan of back straps. This is the metal piece that connects the guard and the pommel and runs uh, along the back of the grip. I really like back straps, but when I saw the Type 5, I decided to go with the standard option that was without the back strap because I really, really like the simple look of it, the simplicity together with the nice and sleek blade and the black grip without a back strap. I really, really like the aesthetic and that's what I went with. Now, communication with Shabla Polska, and I'm going to be completely honest here, was not the best, but also not the worst I've seen. Um, initially, they said they were going to make my Sabre within four months. I ordered in the middle of May 2020, and it arrived at the end of November, so just under a week ago. And yeah, they took six months in the end instead of four months, which would have been fine because it's a completely acceptable turnaround time for a custom order or for a made to order sword in any case, but communication wasn't that great. Um, they never said that they were gonna, would be taking longer. When I asked, they, re they are, were really hesitant to get back to me. So I waited for messages and emails to be answered, sometimes two or three weeks. And it's just not nice to be sitting in the dark and not knowing what is the problem or whether or not there is a problem. So in the end, I got my saber but I would have liked them to be a bit more responsive in the communication side of things. That being said, they do speak very good English and they 
give you what you order and they are reliable in their work. The craftsmanship is excellent and they are very friendly once you do get an email back from them. All right now, stats. This Sabre has a 79 centimeter blade, which is excellent. And the curvature on this is brutal at over six centimeters. I think it was 6.2 or 6.3 centimeters in curvature measured around here in a straight line from here to the point, and you measure the widest point, it's 6.2 centimeters. And that's quite cool. And I like curved sabers, so perfect. Uh, the weight on this is 861 grams, which is excellent because it's in a medium range. It's not too light, but it's also not overly heavy. And it's still very manageable for fencing and drilling on foot, even though this is a hazard saber. As I said earlier, it represents uh, a lot of different sabers from a time span of around 150 years. So that's exactly what I wanted. The balance point is 15 centimeters out, which is also very typical of a saber of this kind. And it features a hatchet point, which is also very typical for hazard sabers of this period. So the tip is at the back of the blade and not centered which is great for cutting, but it's also very acute, which is still fine for thrusting as well. Now, as you can see, it does also feature the typical thumb ring of Polish and Eastern or Central European sabers of the period. Uh, I just made a video about thumb rings, so check that out as well if you want. Other than that, it has a simple knuckle bow, which is very sturdy, very thick and robust and a nice pommel which has a very nice and embellished pin at the end or cap at the end and generally the finish and the polish are amazing um, one thing is i ordered uh, a sharp sword which they happily did the profile for but they did not sharpen it up so i will have to do quite some work to get it to cutting sharp, because if I run it across my skin, even applying some pressure, it does basically nothing. So it has a very nice and acute edge, both the front edge and the last third of the blade. It's also very acute and ready to be sharpened, but it is not quite sharp. So yeah, um, I think that's fair. Many manufacturers send their sharp swords or to be sharpened swords uh, not quite sharp so you can do it yourself to the level you like i think that's fine but i would have preferred in this case to have it sharpened up just a little so it's ready to go which it is not but that's fair and i'm okay with it i also want to talk about distal taper as you can see it doesn't have a lot of complex distal taper like a lot of Napoleonic and later period sabers, it starts out at 5.5 millimeters here, and then it stays basically the exact same thickness up until, or it tapers to the false edge, to the back edge here rather quickly. So it's five centimeters down the guard, at the back of the blade, and it goes down to about five millimeters, so almost nothing, and then it tapers to a two millimeter edge all the way to the point. Um, the front edge is very interesting in that regard because as you can see, it does have the same thickness as the back of the blade. It's around 4.5 millimeters, I measured it, and it has a very thick ricasso on the front edge, which goes up around 15 centimeters and right around here, it tapers into a very acute edge of two millimeters. So it's great if I were to use this as a real fighting weapon, that's actually great because for parrying, you've got a lot of meat here and the blade is not gonna be damaged by any parries down here. But you've still got a very fine edge up top, which is optimal. So price now. These sabers by Shabla Polska are not the cheapest sabers. I don't remember the exact amount in the Polish currency, but in euros it's 700 plus something euros. 
So you are paying quite some money for these savers, but you do get quality for it. Now talking about price, I need to talk about the scabbard as well. Let's put the saber in the scabbard. Because it's such high quality that other manufacturers of scabbards would charge quite an amount for that. Just look at it. It is beautiful. The langets of the saber go into the socket here perfectly on both sides. Thumb ring as well. It's beautiful. And on the outside, so if you're a left, left hander, you would wear this on your left side of your body. And this is where it's uh, embellished beautifully. You have that floral symbol here, you have this floral symbol which runs all the way down. All the metal parts have this flower and even the shape at the bottom has this nice flower and the inside where you wouldn't normally see it if, the, if a person wears it is plain and you can see the seam of the covering on the inside as well. And it has two rings ready to be attached to a belt. And if we take the saber out for a second again, it's also very heavy, the scabbard. You see that it's lined with wood. I hope you can see that well enough. Yeah, there we go. Uh, very thick wood, actually. And this thing is heavy and really, really sturdy and the saber together with the scabbard. I mean, look at that. It's really quite beautiful to look at. Here, once again, in all its glory. <laughs> so, yeah, in conclusion, I really want to say, is it worth it? Yes, I would say so. It's a great saber for test cutting. It's worth it in that I'll be holding on to this probably for the rest of my life, if I can say so. Um, I don't see any reason to sell it or give it away in any shape or form. It's gonna be my test cutter for many years to come. And that's exactly what I bought it for. So I have no complaints. I think it was worth it in the end, even though it's a, quite a steep price. And yeah, I'm happy with it. The blade is definitely the highlight of this thing and it's a quite a generic blade as I said in the beginning for 17th and 18th and maybe early 19th century hussar sabers or infantry sabers and I mean generic in the best possible way because it represents a lot of different sabers and is very much in the middle and uh, concerning weight and length of what you would find in a wide variety of periods and settings. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as the Sabre itself. I certainly do, and I certainly enjoyed making this video. And if you liked the video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel so you're not missing out on my future content. I will be doing some cutting videos with these hopefully soon after I have I have had the chance to sharpen it up properly and yeah, I'll keep you posted. On that note, thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.